Junie B. Jones is Not a Crook, written by Barbara Park, illustrated by Denise Brunkus. Chapter One, No Good Reason. My name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B, that's all. Here's a story for you. It's called Once Upon a Time. My grandfather named Frank Miller went to the store and he bought me some mittens. Once Upon a Time. My great grandfather named Frank Miller went to the store and he bought me some mittens. They are made out of black furry fur. And guess what? It wasn't even my birthday or Christmas or Valentine's Day. Plus, the mittens were not even on sale. Grandpa Miller just bought them for no good reason. And that's the bestest reason I ever heard of. That's how come I love that guy very much. Plus, also, he can skip the end. I like that story a real lot. Because guess why? I didn't even make it up. That's why. That adventure actually happened to me. My grandpa Miller really did buy me some mittens for no good reason. And they are gorgeous, I tell you. When I first opened them, I got filled with glee. Glee is when you run around and jump and skip and laugh and clap and dance on the top of the dining room table and then mommy takes you down from the table and carries you to your room for a timeout. Timeouts kill glee. I wore my new mittens the whole entire morning. Plus, also, I wore them to afternoon kindergarten. I wore them with my attractive winter jacket. Only, it wasn't actually cold out. Only, who even cares? Because that outfit looked very beautiful. I showed my mittens to my bestest friend named Grace. And I also showed them to a variety of strangers. After I got to school, I held my hands over my head and run all over the playground. Look, everybody, look at my new mittens. My grandpa Frank Miller bought them for me for no good reason. I waved them around in the air. How many children see these lovely things? Raise your hands, I hollered. Nobody raised their hands. How many children think these mittens are gorgeous? Please come forward, I yelled. Nobody came forward. <sighs> I put my hands back down and walked to that grace. I couldn't create any interests, I said very glum. Only, guess what? Just then, I spotted my other bestest friend named Lucille. I ran my fastest to greet her. Lucille, Lucille, look at my gorgeous new mittens. See them? They are made out of black furry fur, Lucille petted them. My family has lots of fur. She said, my mother has a fur cape and my aunt has a fur jacket and my uncle has a fur hat. Plus, my Nana just bought a brand new mink coat. Only she think she can't wear it outside the house or people will throw paint on her. My mouth came all the way open. Why? Why, Susiel? Why would people throw paint on your Nana? I asked. Lucille crossed her arms. Don't you know anything, Junie B? It's because people who love furry animals don't like them being made into coats for nanas. Just then, I felt a relief in me because I'm not even a nana. That's why. And besides, my mittens aren't even made out of real fur. Or they are made out of fake furry animals. So those kind don't even count. All of a sudden, the bell rang for school. I zoomed to my room like a speeding rocket, because guess why? More people to show my mittens to, that's why. Chapter two, fur hands. I showed my mittens to my teacher. Her name is Mrs. She has another name too, but I just like Mrs. That's all. Feel them, Mrs., I said. Feel how soft they are? I rubbed one of them on her face. Ooh, they are soft, Junie B, she said. Be sure to put them in your jacket pockets so you won't so they won't get lost, okay? 
I skipped very happy to my seat. Yeah, only I'm not even close. I'm not even going to lose them, I just said to myself. I'm going to wear them right on my hands the whole live long day. Because I love these guys, that's why. I took off my attractive winter jacket and sat down at my table. Then I tapped on Lucille with my furry mittens. Hello. How are you today? I have fur hands. See them, Lucille? See my hands of fur? I flew them in the air. This is what fur hands look like when they're flying in the air, I said. I waved hello. And this is what fur hands look like when they're waving hello, I said. Lucille did a frown. You're being annoying, she said. That's how come I turned around and smiled at a boy named William. I have fur hands, William. See, see them, see my fur hands? I tapped on his head. This is what fur hands look like when they're tapping on your head, I said. Just then I got up from my chair and skipped to my boyfriend named Ricardo. I tickled him under the chin with my soft hands of fur. This is what fur hands look like when they're tickling under your chin, I said. And then I grinned and grinned because that boy brings out the best in me, that's why. Pretty soon, Mrs. saw me out of my seat. She held my hand and marched me back to my table. This is how fur hands look when they're getting marched back to their table, I said. Mrs. plopped me in my chair and she pulled off my fur hands <sighs> and she put them on her desk. I did a sad sigh. <sighs> that is how fur hands look when they're no longer in my possession, I whispered to myself. After that, I put my head on my desk and covered him up with my arms. And I didn't come out for a real long time. Chapter three, being brownie. Mrs. said I could have my mittens back at recess. I stared and stared and stared at the clock and then I tapped my fingers on my table. I, I even did low breaths. Lucille tattletailed on me. Junie B keeps tapping her fingers and making loud breaths. And I can't even concentrate on my work, she grouched. Mrs. came to my table. Hello. How are you today? I said, kind. Kind of nervous. I am fine, except I don't actually have my mittens. She tapped her foot real fast, and that was not a good sign. I think, only guess what? Just then, the bell rang for recess. Oh, boy, I yelled. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Because now I can have my mittens back, right, Mrs. Right, Mrs. Right? I zoomed to her desk and put them on, and then I rubbed those softy things all over my cheeks. It's good to be with you again, I whispered to their fur. And that I put on my attractive winter jacket, and then I skipped outside with my friends. Me and Tattletail Lucille and Grace play horses together at recess. I am brownie, Lucille is blacky, and Grace is yellowy. I'm yellowy, shouted Grace. I'm blacky, shouted Lucille. I'm brownie, I shouted. Only just then, I looked at my mittens and I did a frown because there was a little bit of a problem. Here I think, yeah, only how can I be brownie because my horse paws are black. And so I am two different colors, apparently. Lucille and Grace did frowns too. Hmm, said that Grace. Hmm, said Lucille. <laughs> I said. Just then, Grace clapped her hands together very excitedly. I know, I know. Junie, B, today you and Lucille can trade. Today Lucille can be brownie and you can be blackie. And so that's why your horse paws are, they'll be the right color. Me and Lucille looked at each at that girl because that, what kind of crazy idea was that? I did a huffy breath. <sighs> yeah, only how can I even be blacky when I am already brownie, Grace, I said. I have to be brownie for my whole entire career. You just can't go changing, you know? Yeah, Grace, you just can't go changing, said Lucille. That Grace looked embarrassed at herself. Oh, yeah, what was I thinking? She said very mumbly.
After that, all of us sat down in the grass and we tapped our chins. We thinked and we thinked and we thinked. And then all of a sudden, my whole face lighted up. Hey, I thought of it. I thought of it. I thought of it. I know exactly what to do. I shouted. I jumped up, started again. Grace, say your name again. Say that you are yellowy. And that Grace looked at me curious. I'm yellowy, she said. And I pointed to Lucille. I'm blacky, she said next. And I spinned around joyful. I'm Brownie, I shouted, only guess what? Yesterday, my grandpa, Brownie, bought me black furry mittens, and so that is how come I am only two different colors, and apparently. After that, we did high fives, and we all started playing horses. We galloped and trotted and snorted and snuffled. Only too bad for me, because the sun kept beating down on my horse head, and I got all dippity drippity inside. My attractive winter jacket... I'm going to die from heat perspiration, I said. That's how come I trotted over to a tree and I took off all my stuff. First, I took off my attractive winter jacket. Then I took off my furry black mittens and then I piled them into a careful pile. After that, I galloped away to find my horse friends and we played and we played. Pretty soon, Mrs. blew her loud whistle. That means end of rhesus. Coming, shouted Yellowy. Coming, shouted Blackie. I shouted, and I hurried up back to the tree and got my stuff. Only, guess what? I saw something very terrible there. That's what. And it's called, hey, somebody stole my mittens. Chapter four, no teddy backpack. I runned all around the tree. 911, 911, 911, I hollered. Somebody stole them. Somebody stole my mittens. Mrs. came very quickly. They stole them, they stole them, they stole my mittens, 911, I shouted. Some more. Mrs. bended down to me. Who, Junie B, who stole them, she asked. A stealer, that's who. A stealer stole them. And so what kind of school is this? Because I didn't even know that there was crooks at this place. Mrs. said, calm down in my voice. Yeah, only I can't even calm it down. That's that good, because I'm, I'm heart sick, that's why. Heart sick is a grown-up word for when your heart is sick. I looked at the ground real sad. Now all I have left is my dumb, attractive jacket. Mrs. picked it up, and then she holded my hand, and me and her started to walk. You and I are going to the office, she told me. I quick tried to get my hand away from her. No, missus, I'm not allowed to go there. Mother said that if I get sent to the office one more time that I'll be grounded, young lady. Tears came in my eyes. Grounded, young lady, is when you have to stay on the ground. I said, plus, also, I can go on the rug. Missus smiled. I'm not taking you to the principal's office to punish you, Junie B. I'm taking you to find your mittens. I did a gasp. <gasps> Principal? I asked, very shocked. Principal stole my mittens? Mrs. laughed real loud. <laughs> no, Junie. He didn't steal your mittens. The office is where Lost and Found is located. After that, she took my hand again, and we hurried up to the office. There was a grouchy typing lady at, at that place. I'm not very fond of her. Junie B needs to look through the lost and found, Mrs. told her. Please send her back to class when she is finished. Then Mrs. went back to room nine and left me there all by myself. That typing lady looked over the counter at me and I did a go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even bad today, I explained very nervous. Somebody stole my mittens and that is the end of my tale. The lady kept typing and looking at me. She didn't say any words. Sweat came on my head. Phew, it's warmish in here, isn't it? I said. Just then I heard the door open. It was Principal. He was coming out of his office. I jumped up and down at the sight. Because I know that guy, very good. Principal, look, it's me. It's me, Junie B. Jones. My mittens got stole on the playground, so Mrs. brought me here to get them. So just hand them over and I will be on my way. No questions asked. The principal looked at me funny. Then he went to the closet and pulled out a big box. This is a lost and found, Junie B, he explained. 
Anytime that someone finds something that's been lost, they bring it here and we put it in this box. How come? I asked. How come they bring it here instead of taking it home? Because one time I found a nickel in the street and daddy said that I could put it in my bank because finding isn't the same thing as stealing, right, principal? Finding is a lucky duck. <laughs> the principal laughed a bit. Well, finding a nickel in the street is different, Junie B, he said. For one thing, it would be almost impossible to discover who the owner of the nickel really was. And for another thing, losing a nickel isn't really a big deal. But when someone loses something personal, like mittens, for instance, well, that's a very big deal. And so if someone finds mittens and they bring them in the lost and found, the owner gets them back, he smiled. And that makes everyone happy, Junie B, he said. The owner is happy because she has her mittens back. And the person who found them is happy because she's done a good deed. He pointed to the box to a piece of paper taped to the box. See this? See this? This is a poem the third grade wrote about the lost and found. It says, if you find stuff, bring it in. All day long, you'll wear a grin. I did a frown. Yeah, only here's the problem. I didn't lose my mittens. They got stole on purpose. And so no one will bring them in and wear a green grin probably principal raised his eyebrows. Well, you never know, Junie B. Why don't you look in there and see? I op he opened up the box for me. That's when my eyes got big and wide because it's filled with the, the wonderfulest stuff, items I ever saw. There were sweaters and sweatshirts and baseball caps and gloves and balls and lunch and a lunchbox and a scarf and sunglasses, and a watch with Mickey Mouse on it. Also, there was a backpack like a, that looked like a teddy bear. Ooh, I always wanted one of these, I hollered so thrilled. I put it back on my back and then skipped around the office. How does it look back there? Principal runned after me. He looked, he took the teddy off my back and put it back in the box. We're looking for your mittens, remember? Just then I felt upset again because I almost forgot about those furry guys, that's why. Oh yeah, my mittens, I said real glum. I looked through the box some more. They're not here, I said. My mittens are gone forever and ever, I think. I did a sad sigh. <sighs> then I picked up the teddy backpack again. Maybe I'll take this instead, I said, because this teddy backpack will ease my pain, I believe. Principal said no. How come? I asked, because the owner doesn't even want it anymore, I bet. Her mother already bought her a new teddy backpack, probably, and so this one is just going to go to waste. Principal stood me up and turned me to the door. That meant I'm leaving, I think. Come back tomorrow and look for your mittens, he said. I talked real fast. Yeah, only I just remembered something. I used to have a teddy backpack, just like that one. Maybe only then I lost it, probably, and so I better take, it, take that one home with me or else my mother might be mad. Principal walked me to the door. He faced me down the hall. Goodbye, Junie B, he said. I just hanged my head in real disappointment, because guess why? Goodbye means no teddy backpack. Chapter 5. Gargling and Scribbling Room 9 is way far from Principal's office. I had to stop at the water fountain or else I might not make it. I pressed the water button with my thumb. Then I puckered up my lips and I sucked in the water. I didn't even put my mouth on the spout. Because there's lip dirt on that thing, of course. I sloshed the water all around my cheeks. Then I bended my head way back and I did some gargles. I can gargle very fast, except I can't keep the water in my actual mouth. It run on the sides and dribbled on the floor. It splashed me. It spl I splashed in it with my toe. 
That's when I saw something very wonderful down there. Hey, it's one of those pins that writes four different colors, I said. And then I picked it up and I pushed a little red button on top. A red pin popped out at the bottom. I scribbled red, scribble all over my hand. Wowie, wowie, I love this thing, I said. After that, I pushed the green button and scribbly, scribble green. And I pushed the blue button and scribbly, scribble blue. Plus, also, I pushed the black button and scribbly, scribble black. This pin makes scribbling a pleasure, I said. I put it in my pocket and started skipping to room nine. Only too bad for me, because all of a sudden I remembered the lost and found. I stopped. Oh no. I wish I didn't even remember about that. Now I have to take it back. I have to take the pin back to the lost and found, or else I won't wear a grin. I did a frown, because something didn't make sense here. That's why. Yeah, only I was already wearing a grin, I said. I weared a grin as soon as I saw this wonderful thing. And so taking it... To the office will only make me sad. I tapped on my chin. Hmm. Maybe Principal is mixed up about this. I said to myself, I'm pretty sure I will be happier if I keep it. And here's another thing I'm thinking. I am thinking, whoever owned this pin didn't even take good care of it. So I will give it a good home. And so that kit, so what can be a gooder deed than that? I took it out of my pocket and looked at it. Plus, this even makes sense, because first I got my mitten stolen, and then then I couldn't have this heady backpack, and so I'm keeping this pin fair and square. All of a sudden, my whole face lighted up, because I just thought of a different poem, that's why. And it's called Finders, Keepers, Losers, Weepers. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers, I said, real thrilled. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. Then I jumped up and down, very happy, because everybody says that. And so finders keepers is really a rule, I bet. After that, I put my pen back in my pocket and skipped the rest of the way to room nine. Chapter six, my grandpa's wallet. I kept my pen in my pocket the whole rest of the day. I didn't want people to see it or else they might tattletale to Mrs. And she would make me take it to the lost and found. I behaved myself very good because I didn't want to attract any attention. That's why. I kept my hand in my pocket so my pin would not fall out. Also, I kept thinking about my mittens because I still miss those furry guys. I put my head down on my table. Maybe Grandpa Miller might buy me some more fuzzy mittens. I whispered, because that would be the perfect solution, I think. I raised my head. Hey, yeah, then I would have a wonderful new mittens plus a wonderful new pin. And so what more can a girl ask for? That's what I'd like to know. I sat up in my chair and tapped on Lucille. Guess what, Lucille? My grandpa, Frank Miller, might buy me some new mittens, and then all my troubles will be over. Lucille said, whoop-dee-dee do for me. I know it is whoop-dee-doo, I said real thrilled. And so thank you for your support. And after school, me and my bestest friend named Grace rode the bus together. I run home from the corner like a speedy bullet. My grandpa Frank Miller was babysitting my brother named Ollie. Grandpa Frank Miller, Grandpa Frank Miller, we gotta go to the mitten store, we gotta go to the mitten store, I hollered real loud. Grandpa Frank Miller was in the living room, rocking Ollie, looking very funny at me. Go where? He asked. To the mitten store, to the mitten store. We gotta go to the mitten store. I pulled on his hand. Get up, get up, get up. Let's go, let's get a wiggle on it. Grandpa Miller looked confused at me. That's how come I had to sit down. And I told him what happened at school. Somebody stole in my mittens, I said. They stole them while I was being brownie and I didn't even know where they the crooks at that pl- I didn't even know there were crooks at that place. Grandpa Frank Miller shook his head very sad. Oh, I guess you can find crooks almost anywhere, honey, he said. I know it, I told him. That's how come I never am going to see those furry guys again. And so you and me have to go to the mitten store. I felt in his back pocket and then danced around real thrilled. Hooray! Hooray for your big fat wallet, 
Grandpa, because you got cash in there, right, Grandpa? Right, right, right? Grandpa Frank Miller laughed. <laughs> yes, I do. I've got cash all right, he said, but I'm afraid we won't be able to buy you more mittens. The mittens I bought you were the only furry ones they had left. I bought the very last pair. Just then, all the happy went right out of me, because I didn't actually count on this terrible development. Yeah, only we have to, Grandpa. We have to buy more furry mittens or else. What will I even do? Grandpa Miller ruffled my hair. Did you look in the lost and found at school? He asked. I did a sad breath. <sighs> yeah, only that dumb thing doesn't work that good because people don't always turn stuff in. I patted my new pen in my pocket. Trust me on this, I said real soft. Well, your mittens could turn up still. He said, folks will surprise you sometimes. And he told me a story about his wallet. A few years ago, I lost my wallet at the mall. And I was sure I would never see it again, he said. I bobbed my head up and down. I know that's because finders, keepers, losers, weepers. I said, finders, keepers, losers, weepers is the rule, right, Grandpa? Grandpa smiled. Well, it might be a rule for some people, he said. But luckily, it's not a rule for everyone because that very next day, I went to get, I went out to get my mail, and there it was. My wallet was sitting right smack in the middle of the mailbox, and not one penny was missing. His eyes looked happy and sparkly. Can you imagine that little girl? He said. Someone had the chance to take some everything in my wallet, but instead they drove all the way to my house and they put it in my mailbox. Just then he reached into his back pocket and pulled out his wallet. Look what I have lost. Look what I would have lost if they had return hadn't returned it, he said. And he took a picture out of his wallet and handed it to me. It's you and a baby. That's not just any baby, he said. That's you, Junie B. That's a picture of the very first time I ever held you. He took the picture back and stared and stared at it. Nicest thing a stranger ever did for me, bringing this picture back, he whispered soft. And he leaned over and kissed my head, and he kissed me on my head. Chapter 7. The Pink Fluffy Girl. After I talked to my grandpa, I went to my room and closed my door real secret. Then I took my wonderful pin out of my pocket and did a big sigh. Because <sighs> I had a confusion in me, that's why. I wish I had never heard of the wallet story, I said. Because finders, keepers, losers, weepers isn't a rule, apparently. And so now I might be a crook. I looked at my wonderful pin. Yeah, only I don't even feel like a crook. I feel like a lucky duck. But I still have to take this thing to the lost and found, probably. And then it will go two ways, just like the teddy backpack. All of a sudden, I heard my mother and daddy come home from work. I quick hided my pin under my mattress because those two would not understand the situation. They came in my room and kissed me hello. I told them what had happened to my mittens. Then I begged and begged for them to take me to the store. But mother said there's no more left and daddy said there's no more left too. And there's there so there was no more left apparently. That's how come I got depressed all over again, and I couldn't even sleep good that night. I kept on wondering about who was the mitten crook, and did he, what did he look like? Because I've seen crooks on TV before, and they're biggish and meanish with tattoos on themselves. Just then, I sat up in my bed, because a good idea popped into my head, that's why. A tattoo is easy to spot, I bet, I said. And so maybe I can find that crook on the playground tomorrow. After that, I went straight to sleep because I would need my strength for crook looking. The next day at recess, I didn't, I didn't play. Horses with Lucille and Grace. Instead, I run all around the playground looking for the mitten crook. Only too bad for me because most of the children had their jackets on and so I couldn't even see if the if the crooks had any tattoos pretty soon the bell rang 
That is when my eyes got tears in them because I would never see the mittens again. Not ever, ever, never. I started rock- walking towards room nine, my nose all sniffling and drippity. <laughs> I wiped it on my attractive jacket sleeve and then all of a sudden a pink fluffy girl skipped past me. She had on a pink fluffy dress with pink fluffy socks and shoes and a pink fluffy jacket and pink fluffy fur. And guess what else she had on? She had my black furry mittens in her pink fluffy pockets. My eyes got big and wide. Hey, my mittens, my mittens, my mittens, I screamed all loud. Then I put my head down and I zoomed at her like a speeding bull. Mrs. saw me running and she grabbed me by my attractive winter jacket. I jumped up and down and pointed, that pink Fluffy girl stole my mittens. She's the crook. Only her. Jacket is covering up her tattoo. So that's why she had me stumped. Mrs. called the pink fluffy girl. She skipped over to where we were. I kept on jumping. You stole them. You stole my mittens. I said. No, I didn't. She said back. I didn't steal anything. I found these mittens. They were right in the grass. And so I thought nobody wanted them. I did, I yelled. I wanted them. My grandpa Miller bought them for no good reason. And I have been worrying about them all day and all night. And that is called heartache, madam. Mrs. said to hush my voice. She took my mittens away from the pink fluffy girl and gave them back to me. Then she bended down and she talked to the pink fluffy girl real serious. Even if you thought that no one wanted these mittens, it was wrong of you to take them she told her. The pink fluffy girl pointed at me. But she didn't even take good care of them, she said. I stamped my foot. Yes, I did. I did too take care of them. I left them with my attractive winter jacket because I didn't know where I didn't know there was crooks at this place. Mrs. said hush to me again. You should have taken them to the lost and found, she told the pink fluffy girl. Yeah, because then I would have found them when I looked there, I said. And so what do you think that box is there for? My health? (sighs) The pink fluffy girl started to cry, but I really, really love them, she said. Mrs. smoothed her hair. I'm afraid that's not the issue, she said. Yeah, we're afraid that's not the issue, because finders keepers isn't a rule apparently and so from now on if you find some stuff or my stuff you should take it to the lost and found plus also you can put it in my grandpa's mailbox mrs looked at me for a real long time she said i'm getting on her nerves after that she held the pink fluffy girl's hand and they went to talk to her teacher i quick put on my mittens and buried my not a crook the next day i went to the principal's office The grouchy typing lady looked over the counter at me. I rocked back and forth on my feet. Yeah, only I'm not even bad again, I said. I just need to go to the lost and found, and that's all. The grouchy typing lady opened up the closet and pulled out the big box. Just then, the phone rang, and she hurried to answer it. I quick-bended down and digged my hands in the lost and found. Then my heart got very thrilled because I saw that wonderful teddy backpack again. That's why. I smug- I snuggled my face in its tummy. Mm, I still love this softy guy, I whispered. I put him back. I put him on my back and skipped all around and the grouchy typing lady hanged up the phone. Did you lose that too? She asked. Is that why you're here? I kept on standing there and standing. Well, she said. Finally, I did a big sigh. Then I walked very slowly back to the box. And I took off the teddy backpack. No, that's not why I'm here. After that, I reached in my pocket and pulled out my wonderful pin. I found this, I said. It was on the floor by the water fountain. And I really love it, only... That's not the issue. Then I did a big, deep breath, and I dropped my wonderful pin into the box of lost and found. I'm not a crook, I said, kind of quiet. 
The grouchy typing lady b looked nicer at me. She ruffled my hair. No, she said. Of course you're not a crook. After that, I rocked back and forth on my feet some more. And I waited and waited and waited. The typing lady raised up her eyebrows at me. I'm waiting for the grin, I explained. Only there seems to be a delay. She laughed right out loud. That's when I felt it, the grin. It came right on my face. Hey, it's working, it's working, I, I said real squealy. I skipped all around the office, very happy. Then the typing lady opened up the door and I skipped all the way to room nine. And then guess what? I didn't even find a pen that writes in different colors. What a big relief. 